Over the past couple of years, I've consistently included AI benchmark in all of my Scatterbencher guides. I used it for the first time, I think with the UHD graphics 750. And the reason why I include this benchmark is obvious to anyone who's following, I guess the news, AI and deep learning are a big thing. AI Benchmark Alpha is an open source Python library designed to assess the AI performance of different hardware platforms, including CPUs, GPUs, and TPUs. It relies on the TensorFlow machine learning library, offering a lightweight solution to measure inference and training speed for essential deep learning models. Installing and running AI Benchmark is slightly less straightforward than you'd expect. Since the process has changed a little bit since I initially introduced the benchmark to you guys, I figured why not create an updated installation and benchmarking guide. In this video, I'll explain how to install and run the AI benchmark on Windows native and Windows subsystem for Linux. I'll assume you've already satisfied the basic Windows machine learning requirements, such as a compatible Windows 10 or 11 operating system, suitable hardware and the necessary drivers installed. At the end of the video, I'll also provide some quick benchmark numbers of the EK flat PC featuring the NVIDIA RTX A5000 GPU. Traditionally, TensorFlow and machine learning were the easiest to set up on Linux, but a lot of work has gone into also enabling it on Windows. Nowadays, Windows is very ready for machine learning activities. Windows ML is a high-performance, reliable API for deploying hardware-accelerated ML inferences on Windows devices. It is available for Windows 8.1 or higher and is included with the Windows installation since Windows 10 version 18.09. Direct Machine Learning or Direct ML is a component under the Windows machine learning umbrella for reliable, real-time, high-performance, low-latency, and resource-constrained scenarios, such as measuring benchmark performance, we should use DirectML. DirectML requires a DirectX12-capable graphics card. Almost all commercially available graphics cards released in the last several years support DirectX12. I first used DirectML in 2021 when I first tried AI Benchmark. The reason wasn't better accuracy, but compatibility since the TensorFlow machine learning library did not support Intel graphics. Nowadays, I use it because TensorFlow 2.10 was the last TensorFlow release that supported a GPU on Windows native. Starting with TensorFlow 2.11, you must use TensorFlow in WSL2 or the TensorFlow DirectML plugin in Windows native. A couple more notes before we get started. Since AI Benchmark is a Python application, we're gonna have to install Python. I find that the easiest way to do that on Windows is using Anaconda. Secondly, we'll use TensorFlow 2 for this benchmarking guide. Let's get started by installing AI Benchmark on Windows. First, download and install Anaconda for Windows. After completing the installation, run the Anaconda prompt. Create a new Python environment for the benchmark. Make sure to specify Python version 3.10 as the TensorFlow DirectML plugin only supports Python 3.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 0.10. Activate your newly created environment. Download and install the base TensorFlow CPU. Download and install the TensorFlow DirectML package. Download and install the NumPy 1.23 package. Otherwise, you will get this error when running the benchmark. Then download and install the AI Benchmark package. Let's now also try to install AI Benchmark on Windows subsystem for Linux. First, make sure WSL is correctly installed on your Windows PC. If not, open PowerShell and type WSL install, and then follow the installation instructions. If it is the case, then open the WSL prompt. Now download the Anaconda for Linux 64-bit installer. Next, install Anaconda. Then create a new Python environment for the benchmark. 
Make sure to specify Python version 3.10 as the TensorFlow DirectML plugin supports only Python version 3.7, 0.8, 0.9, and 0.10. Now activate your newly created environment. Download and install the base TensorFlow CPU. Download and install the TensorFlow DirectML package. Download and install the NumPy 1.23 package, otherwise you'll get this error when trying to run the benchmark. Then lastly, download and install the AI benchmark package. And now it's time to run the AI benchmark. Doing that is identical on Windows Native and Windows Subsystem for Linux. First, open the Anaconda prompt, then activate the Conda environment with AI benchmark, start Python, import the AI benchmark package, specify the benchmark parameters. So for example, use CPU equals true will run the benchmark on the CPU, use CPU equals none will run the benchmark on the GPU, and verbose level three will provide us with the most detailed information during the benchmark run. And then lastly, simply start the benchmark. Now some additional optimizations and tricks. Since AI and deep learning performance is a pretty big selling point, all of the chip manufacturers are putting a lot of effort into releasing optimized packages for deep learning performance. And I tend to use those also in my scatterbencher overclocking guides. Intel 1DNN is an open source high performance library designed to accelerate deep learning applications on Intel architecture CPUs. It provides optimized primitives for various deep learning operations, such as convolutions, inner products, and other key operations used in neural networks. The One API Deep Neural Network Library, or One DNN optimizations, are available in the official x86-64 TensorFlow after version 2.5. The feature is off by default before version 2.9, but users can choose to enable those CPU optimizations by configuring the correct environment variable. Since TensorFlow version 2.9, the One API Deep Neural Network Library optimizations are enabled by default. I also came across an AMD equivalent library called ZenDNN. However, I've yet to try this on an AMD system. You can also rely on the NVIDIA CUDA Deep Neural Network Library, or CUDNN, for NVIDIA GPUs. CUDNN is a GPU accelerated library of primitives for deep neural networks. The installation requires a different version of TensorFlow, not TensorFlow DirectML, since TensorFlow 2.10 is no longer available on Windows Native. The installation is pretty straightforward. After installing Anaconda for Linux on WSL, we do the following. First, create and activate a new Anaconda environment. Then install the appropriate CUDA toolkit. You can find a support matrix on NVIDIA's website. Next, install the CUDNN package. Then install TensorFlow and also install NumPy version 1.23. Lastly, install the AI benchmark. Now you can run the AI benchmark as I explained earlier in the video. Instead of CUDNN, you can also consider installing the TensorRT Python library. Lastly, I also want to mention AMD's Rockham software package. Rockham is an open source software stack for GPU computation, featuring a collection of drivers, development tools, and APIs, enabling GPU programming from the low level kernel to end user applications. While Rockham is fully integrated into machine learning frameworks such as PyTorch and TensorFlow, it's currently unavailable on Windows Native. These days, it's pretty common to have multiple graphics devices inside your system. The integrated graphics inside your CPU and a high-performance discrete graphics card. If you want to switch between those for benchmarking AI benchmark, you can do that very easily by setting an environment variable. The variable is DML visible devices, and the number indicates the specific device. On this EK flat PC, device zero is the NVIDIA discrete GPU, and device one is the Intel integrated graphics. By default, AI benchmark will run the first available device. 
So if I want to run on the integrated graphics, I'd have to set DML visible devices equals one. The AI benchmark is a pretty tough benchmark that can take a long time. Sometimes you may run into an error called DXGI error device removed while running the benchmark. That happens when there's a timeout when the device takes too long to complete a workload. You can increase the timeout with the registry entry TDR delay to solve the issue. This registry entry will extend the time a software application waits for the integrated graphics. To end the video, I'd like to demonstrate how I use AI Benchmark to characterize the deep learning performance of a certain system. The system that I have on hand is the EK Flat PC, which is a small form factor system targeted at the high performance embedded computing market. The high performance embedded computing market represents a convergence of two distinct yet related domains, high performance computing and the embedded systems market. Let's break down each component and how they come together in the HPEC market. HPC players use supercomputers and high-end computing clusters to solve complex and compute intensive problems. These systems are designed to handle massive amounts of data and perform calculations at high speeds. HPC is commonly used in scientific research, simulations, weather forecasting, financial modeling, and other applications that require significant computational power. Embedded systems are specialized computing systems designed to perform specific tasks within a larger system. Embedded systems are often deployed in resource-constrained scenarios, such as limited space or unique environmental characteristics. HPEC emerges at the intersection of these two markets by bridging the gap between the computational capabilities of HPC and the practical constraints of embedded systems. It enables embedded devices to handle the demanding tasks traditionally found in high performance computing and expand the range of applications that can benefit from advanced computational capabilities. The EK flat PC comes in an HPEC size package weighing less than five kilo. The weight is a consequence of the internal water block, which cools the various compute hardware, including a CPU and a GPU. The flat PC connects to an external cooling unit. Liquid cooling helps keep the CPU and GPU cool enough to boost to its maximum frequencies. The EK flat PC has three direct ML capable hardware components. The Core i9-11900H Tiger Lake CPU, the Intel UHD Graphics for 11th Gen Intel Processor Integrated Graphics, and a discrete NVIDIA RTX A5000 laptop GPU. Combined, they have an approximate compute performance of about 20 teraflops. When we put these components through their paces in AI Benchmark, we can see why NVIDIA is the current king of AI. The GPU trumps the CPU regarding AI Benchmark performance many times over. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe you're eager to run AI Benchmark on your system as well. As per usual, I wanna thank you for watching and the patrons for their support. I'll also put up a written version of this video on my blog. And if you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section below and see you next time.